And now we come to my favorite part of Q, inter-process communication. This is something that is a royal P-I-T-A in most languages, but in Q, it's dead simple. Funky, but dead simple. So what do we mean by inter-process communication? We mean that you have two processes, in this case they will be Q, running on potentially different machines that are going to talk to each other. Now, what do they have to say to each other? Generally, one of them will have some sort of data or some sort of computational capabilities that is of interest to the other. So the one that has the capabilities that want to be shared is called the server. So you have a data server, you might have a computation server, and the other that wants to access those capabilities is called the client. So in order to do this, we have to have two processes. One, the server, the other, the client. So if we go to the console, you'll see that I have two Q processes. Pretty much look the same right now. We'll make the one on the left the server. And because it's the server, it has to be able to respond to requests from other processes. So in order to do that, we have to open a port. This is nothing Q-specific. It's just particularly easy in Q. So we'll open a port. And the way you do that in Q on the server, again, this is on my own machine, so everything is wide open. We don't have any security issues to deal with. Lowercase p system command backslash lowercase p, distinct from uppercase p we saw before, which affected the display precision of floats, lowercase p, and let's give it a port number. But of course, there's only one port worth opening, and that's 4242. All right, so that server, that process, is ready to receive communication from another queue process. So let's go to the client process, and what we're going to do here is connect from the client to the server. And the way we will do that is by opening a connection. And we identify the connection with the symbolic name, which looks kind of like a file handle. We can put the name of the machine on the system. Or if it's on the same machine, we can just omit the name. And then we can follow it with a port. You could also put localhost there, since we're on the same machine. But we don't need to do that here. Then we give that symbolic machine address to the function hopen. hopen talks to the operating system and tries to open the connection. If it succeeds, it returns a function which we can use to send requests to the remote server. We will store that function in a variable called h. All right, so if things worked, I can now send commands to the remote server. So for example, let's ask the remote server to do a really significant computation. And you say, well, how do I know it did that on the remote server? The remote server didn't even blink. Good question. We could also issue the request to the remote server in a slightly different format. Let's call the function square x star x, we could send that function to the remote server. So we make this general list that we've seen before. We put the squaring function, and we put the parameter that we want to execute. So this is like a remote procedure call, except you assume the remote process doesn't have the function there. You shift the function down to it and say, execute that function remotely. And again, the remote server didn't blink, which it shouldn't because it's just responding to requests and it has nothing to say to the console. Now I'm going to warn you, although these are nice for development, these two methods of communicating to the remote server, they're extremely unsafe. I can send any command across. I could send the command to close the process, to wipe out the file system. Unless the remote server has security in place, the queue process will do what it's asked to do. Bad news. Don't bring up and open servers in queue unless you lock down the security, because it's very powerful. As the ex-CTO of KX, Niall Dalton, once said, queue is a language for consenting adults. In this case, both sides better know what they're doing, because it's very easy to get yourself in trouble. So don't do this, all right? Kids, don't do this at home. Instead. What you'll do is the following. You'll do a true remote procedure call. So here is a function that lives on the server. We'll 
which is the cube form. Well, cub three, uh, that's good enough. Who cares? I meant to type cube. Here is how you would invoke that. You notice the slight difference here. Instead of sending the function itself, you notice when I sent the function, I sent the function, I treated the function as data, right? Square was data, and it was sent along with five to the remote server, which recognized that it was a function because it was in the first slot, and that's how you're allowed to do that. Now, instead, I'm sending a symbol, which is the name of the remote function, cub3. All right, and you notice it gave me the answer of 125. And you'd say, well, how do I know that it actually ran on the server? All right. You don't trust me? Let's modify our function definition on the remote server. This is a really cool and very funky Q function. Its name is zero uppercase n. Bang. Really? Yes, really. Zero uppercase bang, zero uppercase n bang, is a function that you can slip into any Q computation, and what it does is it takes the argument that you've passed it, displays it to the console, and feeds it on to the next step to the left in the computation. In this case, it's going to display the result of the computation on the server side and then return the result to the client side. Now you can believe me that it actually was doing this computation on the server. All right? So this is how you do remote procedure calls in Q. Put the functions that you want to execute on the server and call them by name from the client. It's safe. Why is it safe? Well, first of all, assuming you have some sort of Kerberos environment, which has already verified that the remote caller is who they say they are, then you can look them up. You can use LDAP or whatever to say, who is calling me? You can look them up and you can say, <clears throat> what are they allowed to do? So it's very easy to implement this in tables to say who's allowed to do what. So when you get the remote call on the server side, I don't have time to show that now, you can say, ah, this person, they're asking to do this. Let me look up. Are they allowed to do this? This is not very much coding queue to, to, to do. So you can lock down your system and put in a simple system of permissioning very quickly in queue. All right. So that is simple I.O.